and welcome to Just One More Watch. Welcome today to one of the most anticipated videos of the year so far, as far as I'm concerned anyway. Welcome today to a video that I flagged I was making a number of weeks ago now when I re-reviewed the Titanium Special Edition Lunar Pilot. It has been common knowledge for months now that Boulevard were working on releasing a new mini version of the Lunar Pilot early in 2023. I've had my feelers out locally to make sure I got one of the first examples fresh off the boat. In fact, I've got two, a black one which I bought and a blue one which is on loan. So thank you Deepak from Starbuy, Australia's favourite online watch retailer. Not a sponsored video, I paid for mine but he loaned me the second one so I could show you both. Why the anticipation then? Well, if you have the wrist for it, I think the Lunar Pilot is a must for a relatively affordable watch collection. Great backstory, great movement, basically a great watch. The problem is, a lot of people, me included, don't have the wrist for it. It's a 45, it wears big, it wears flat. I know many have tried the glass slipper a couple of times, but it just didn't fit them. So there was a fair degree of excitement when these minis were announced, and a fair degree of head scratching when they were announced that only two millimeters smaller than the original. So 43 rather than 45. So today's question is therefore, is the new mini Lunar Pilot still too big? Let's flip the camera and find out. Okay, two boulevards in two boxes then. What am I gonna do with them? Well, I'm gonna get into them. I'm gonna peel and reveal both watches, show you them, show you how they compare to each other, do dimensions and specifications, etc. And obviously the all important wrist shots. And then I'm gonna do what I did a couple of months ago when I looked at the 50th anniversary edition. I'm gonna compare this new mini Lunar Pilot directly to a few chronographs from my collection at various different sizes. So you can see what it looks like comparatively and you can also see what it looks like on my wrist comparison compared to these other chronos. I think that's very, very important. So let's get into the box. If you're buying one of these from an authorized dealer, you are getting a three year warranty, which is excellent. I would suggest you do not buy one of these at RRP. You know, there's a bit of hype around this one at the moment, but I don't think boulevards are worth RRP, say it quietly. There we go, the classic tuning fork logo, and this is the new, uh, very Snoopy color version, blue and white. I have no doubt that is exactly what Boulevard were hoping people would draw the line between this and the aforementioned Omega Speedmaster variant. And by the way, this box has two slots because these watches are normally supplied with a leather NATO strap, Boulevard hardware. Starby haven't received their consignment of them yet, so it's gonna be posted to me by separate cover next week, but it is included as part of the package. And lurking in the bottom of the box, there was one of these plastic cards with a certificate of authenticity and a little bit of backstory. I won't go into that today. I've done it several times already. Suffice to say that the Lunar Pilot is one of a few watches only to make it onto the surface of the moon back in 1971 on the wrist of astronaut Dave Scott. He was supposed to wear his Omega, but it broke. He happened to have a Lunar Pilot in his pocket as his own watch, put it on his wrist, made it to the moon. The rest is history. So model reference 98K112, this is the version that people seem to be getting most excited about, I guess because it brings something different to the Lunar Pilot line. Certainly we haven't had one of these kind of blue panda variants before. Let's peel off the dial covering, always so satisfying. Now immediately, if you are familiar with the Lunar Pilot, this looks very familiar, but not the same. High polished sides, which is new, the old one was all bead blasted, and no date. Now I think the no date is gonna be generally perceived as a positive. I'm not sure how people will take the fact that this one doesn't have the bead blasted look. They've gone slightly dressier, perhaps there's an acknowledgement there that this one will be aiming for a different market. Similarly, bracelet, high polished center links, Butterfly clasp, no micro adjustment here. Again, that tends to be on dressy air watches now. No half links, I would call those two links, two thirds links if you see what I mean. So yeah, chances are you're gonna be wearing this one loose and it is still a fairly chunky watch. Let's remove the little quartz retainer, push the crown in and see if I can bring this one to life. There we go. Snapping into life as one would expect from a quartz watch. Okay, let's peel off these stickers and then get this one sized. 
All right, I'm back. This one is sized and set to the Watch Reviewer's favourite time, and we do have one more sticker to peel on the back here, assembled in China. Hey, that's the way of the world. If you don't fancy buying things that are assembled in China, perhaps you need to actually live on the moon and not just buy a watch that has notionally been to the moon. All right, let me pick this one off. Okay, so when I picked this up the other day, I was able to compare this new Mini to the old original watch. What Bulova have done is they haven't altered the dial. It's the same dial, same handset, I believe they've just deleted the date. All they've done is trim the dimensions off the case. They've trimmed a couple of mil off the case. So then what are the all important dimensions? Well, I measure the diameter at 43.5 on its narrowest point. They've only managed to trim 1.5 mil therefore. 13.6 mil thick with a lug to lug of 51. Again, they haven't managed to trim it much. Is it enough? We'll find out when I get it on wrist. 20 millimeter lug width, zero taper. It's 20 at the clasp. Sized up for me, now I have removed four full size links and those two two third links, if you see what I mean, I still get a weight of 169 grams. So it is a fairly big boy, even in this new, in inverted commas, mini size. 50 meters of water resistance from the push pull crown. That is flat sapphire crystal, top hat with that nice frosted edge. Door handles around the world are salivating in anticipation. And the caliber, I believe, is a carryover without the date. It is a Bulova. 8136. As pointed out, the sides of the case are now high polish, as are those upper lug surfaces. Fixed bezel has two brush surfaces to it, one circular brush around the outer edge, and there's a little chamfer just leading in at a slight angle to that piece of sapphire. It is also brushed. Now you see a rather awkward fit here with the bracelet, not fit in terms of the way it actually fits, it's not too bad, there's a little bit of rattle, fit in terms of the finish. High polish to brush to high polish to brush to high polished, yeah, not fantastic looking. It does look better than the bead blasted one though, which was a real clash. Interestingly, the two chrono pushers though appear to be some form of anodizing. Nice blue to match the blue on the dial. There is a Bulova tuning fork logo once again on that oversized crown, but it is only push pull as noted. The bracelet is okay if nothing special, just push pins. Again, 1400 Aussie dollars is the RRP for one of these. Oh, I wouldn't be keen on push pins for 1400 bucks. Fairly standard butterfly clasp here. I got a decent enough fit, taking out those two smaller links, and it has the tuning fork logo once again in the middle. Movements carried over from the previous unit 262 kilohertz ultra high frequency quartz. One push of the top pusher starts the movement. You can see this, this measures down to 1 20th of a second. Now that is pretty nice. Because it's ultra high frequency quartz, they claim a higher level of accuracy. I believe they used to claim plus or minus 10 seconds per year for this one, but recently walked it back to plus or minus five seconds per month. That's still a lot better than you would get from your average quartz chrono. No lapse though, and it's a nice slow reset back up to zero. You can see because it's running at high frequency, the second hand here, it's a permanently ticking small second at the six o'clock, ticks twice per second, and there is a lovely smooth sweep from that chrono hand. 60 minute chrono timer, that is the sub-register over there at nine. You're looking at roughly two to three years for a battery life on one of these. Easy enough to swap it out yourself, easy enough to pop the case back off. And because it's only 50 meters of water resistance, I wouldn't be too worried about doing that yourself. Bracelet is quick release and because of that I can show you the case back again. I believe this is another carryover from the 45 screw down. You can see the holes for the tool and you can also see the Boulevard Tuning Fork logo once more and the details of the mission that took Dave and his mates to the moon. I believe those are the coordinates at the bottom there of the very point that they landed at. Okay, let's head outside for a bit of macro with both watches. I have peeled the stickers off the black one now as well. It's very much the traditional carryover version. Some subtle differences in terms of dial texture as well as coloration between these two. The black and white one has white hands, touch of silver here and there, whereas the blue and white creamy white version has black surrounds to the hands and black surrounds to those applied indices as opposed to the silver surrounds on the black 
version. Black version has a very mild sunburst effect to the main dial surface, whereas the Snoopy, if you will, variant has a fairly mild dial texture, a little rough texture to that main dial surface. Plenty of depth, recessed subdials on both watches, raised indices on both watches, and a recessed minute track around the outer edge before you get to that raised tachymeter. It's a very nice effect. Mind you, they do have 13.6mm to play with. So it should be fairly easy to get some depth onto the dial. And there's some loom on the dial on hands as well. It doesn't specify, but I'm guessing BGW9 because of that pale white glow. Looks very impressive initially. If I turn the speed up though, the indices fade first. The hands aren't too far behind. Not bad though, I have to say, not bad. This isn't a dive watch, it is a chrono. You can still see those hands clearly at the end of 20 minutes. Yeah, not bad. Enough of all of this already. What's it like on wrist, Jody? Well, this is what it's like on wrist. I've got a seven inch wrist for your reference, kind of average size on the bell curve. The 45 was just not suitable for me. It wore too big, it wore too flat. This 43 and a half is big, but it is wearable. Yes, indeed, if you've got a seven inch wrist, pop those champagne corks. The Bull of a Lunar Pilot is back on the menu in this mini format. Look, don't get me wrong, this is still a big chunky chronograph, 13.6mm with a 51 lug to lug is large, but it's manageable in a way that the old one just wasn't. The lug tips point down slightly, the bracelet conforms very neatly. It's really helping you out here, particularly with those female end links. It's pretty big, it's pretty heavy. This is on the upper edges of what I normally go for but it's within that envelope. So yes, indeed, they have made a lunar pilot that is now wearable for those like me in the center of the bell curve. What if you're not in the center of the bell curve though? What if you've got a six and a half inch wrist or maybe smaller? I can't tell you whether or not this watch is gonna fit. You can tell yourself that. Do you normally wear watches with a 51 mil lug to lug and 170 gram weight? If the answer's yes, then you'll probably be okay with this one. If the answer's no, then you might not be okay, even with this reduced footprint lunar pilot, I'm afraid. So what about these comparisons then that I promised you? Well, here is the old one from a few weeks ago with the 45 mil in titanium. That's it on the left next to my 43 mil Breitling Navitimer, my 40 mil Hamilton Intramatic, and my 38 mil Seagull 1963. You can see there, it was clearly the biggest of the group. And here is the new 43 and a half version with those same three chronographs for comparison. It's still the big boy, it's still on the left of shot, but it isn't that much bigger than the Navitimer. And when I show you the wrist shots, yeah, it is chunky, but it fits me quite nicely, I have to say. Because of the lack of micro adjust in the bracelet, I will be inclined to wear it a little bit looser rather than tighter. You saw that from the pocket shot earlier on, it was down below the knuckle. But this new smaller version is a yes in the way that the older version was just a no for me. And here we are, I'll show you what they look like in order of size on my wrist. So from Boulevard to Breitling and then down to Hamilton, down once more to the 38 mil Seagull, which is probably the lowest I would want to go with a chronograph back up to the 40 mil Hammy, which is normally my sweet spot, 43 mil Breitling, which is still perfectly wearable, and 43 and a half mil Boulevard to finish again, still perfectly wearable. So to conclude, I don't think this new smaller version is quite what we were expecting. I was certainly expecting a one for one shrunken down version of the old watch, but with a smaller dial, a smaller case, a smaller everything. And that's not quite what we got. We also got a different mixture of brushed and polished surfaces on the watch, making it not nearly so tooly, and I think quite a bit more dressy than previous versions. Boulevard, I would imagine, think they will sell more watches this way, and who am I to disagree with them? I think they probably will as well. Unfortunately, there will still be people for whom Cinderella slipper simply doesn't fit. This is going to be big, particularly if you have a much smaller than average wrist and you prefer a watch that actually fits your wrist rather than hangs over the sides. Boulevard launched the original Lunar Pilot back in 2016. It took them seven years, therefore, to come out with a smaller version. All you small wristed guys and girls, don't hold your breath for the 41. I'd love to see that happen as well, but it might not happen this decade. 
So there you have it, perhaps not quite what we wanted, perhaps still a little large, perhaps not quite the scaled down version of the original because of those changes. To answer the question, is it too big? I don't think it's too big if you have an average size wrist. If you have a smaller than average size wrist though, you might have to wait for the 41 coming in 2032, maybe. If you want to watch some more Lunar Pilot content, click here or here. Thanks for watching this one. I hope to see you all again in a future video.